All right, we are here in my Vermihut worm bin, and this is the fourth tray that we've been calling the sterile tray because we started it without inoculating it. And right now there are only two trays on my system. I just took down or took off the bottom most tray and it is full of castings and we're going to harvest that. In fact, I did a video on that if you want to look at it and I dissected this whole vermihut. So if you're ever wondering what is inside this whole system, go ahead and check out that video. Um, so as I was kind of cleaning out the different sections, um, you see there's a lot of castings on here and that's from um, the castings that I found uh, on the bottom lower layers and in the basin. So we're gonna go ahead and dig in here and see how our last feeding went. And this is going to be the fifth feeding and this tray is 32 days old. So let's just kind of get in here. And at the end of the video, I've got a treat. I don't usually do time lapses in this bin, but since we took out the bottommost layer, the bottommost bin, and we started harvesting, I have a bunch of worms. Speaking of a bunch of worms, check that out. That is pretty much a worm ball. I think right where my thumb is is an apple and they are just enjoying that. Look at that. Wow. I'm seeing mostly blue worms here. You can tell because they're moving so fast and they're thin, but they are just absolutely attacking that. What a great little find there. <laughs> oh yeah. That's just kind of Set that aside and hopefully I won't keep picking it up and thinking I have multiple worm balls, but let's just keep going in here and airing out what we have. Now also in the, the last time we fed this, we found um, some white mystery substance and based on the comments and me kind of doing research, I think it is either a slime mold or it is a fungi and what was kind of spidering out was the mycelium and slime molds have been reclassified into the kingdom um, protista and fungi are in their own kingdom so slime molds and fungus aren't really related so but still it's one or the other slime molds are single cell but then they group together to form a um kind of a gelatinous oozy kind of thing and the fungi can and put out those my, mycelium and then you know we know a lot of them that grow mushrooms but they put those things out first and that kind of thing now here is a good example of two blue worms and a red wiggler and I can tell it's a red wiggler because it is bigger at the very end right here I can see like an orange tail and if we can find his clitum, it will be uh, bulgy compared to the rest. But that's, if you ever have kind of some mixed worms, blue worms and red worms, that's one of the ways you can tell the difference. If you just have a, a bunch of worms you find in the garden or you don't know what's in there at all, then you'd really have to count the segments and that kind of thing. Whoa, we just uncovered something huge here. <laughs> there you go. Check that out. That is a worm. It's not really in a ball. It's kind of flat on the bedding, but that is really good right there. Lots of worms in here. This bin is no longer sterile. It is definitely inoculated with all kinds of microbes that are hoping the worms break this down. All right, so this feels slightly dry, and I don't know if that's because of all the bedding I have in here or if it is dry, but you know, where the food parts are, it is definitely moist. And we've been feeding down the center, and I think what I'm gonna do this time is I'm going to feed on the side. That way they kind of have a gradient uh, for heat. I'm a little sensitive to heat right now because if you've been following along in my outdoor worm bin, um, I had some heat issues when I put in a bunch of rice and basically made a hot compost pile in there. But, you know, if you like this video and 
you want to see more of it, I've got three bins and three playlists on my channel, so go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell and you'll know when I come out with a new video, but each playlist follows along for with each bin and you can see things from start to finish castings. So this is looking looking good. I'm just going to kind of help these paper towel rolls along. I think I something went over the side that I'll get that later. But just kind of airing out the rest here. And you can, I think you can see right down here, the little dark squares. That is the holes that are in the bottom of this uh, tray here. So the worms can go up and down freely. So, yep, there we go, get some more. So let me move this around and then we'll, I think we'll feed right along here. Definitely breaking up that worm ball. And I can, as I dig down, I know I had some castings on top, but as I dig down, I'm gonna put this apple here so I can put it in the feeding zone. As I dig down, I'm, I'm feeling and seeing castings, some seeds that sprouted. So it's not just the castings that I dumped in here. This is starting to get towards castings. Now, as we look at it, it looks like it's mostly bedding, right? Um, but in about two or three feedings, it's gonna almost change miraculously where it just seems like there's a ton of, of uh, castings in here. So we're gonna get to that point soon. This is the fifth feeding. And after a couple, three more, I think we'll get to 50-50. But right now it's it's nowhere near 50-50. This is now mostly, mostly bedding still. Okay, I think we've played around enough. We'll get uh, situated here so that I can make like a feeding zone. And we will start our feeding and then again, definitely stay tuned for the, uh, the worm time lapse. I am happy with the volume right now. Of course, probably three or four feedings from now, I'm gonna say, where did all the volume go? And that's because as they eat the bedding and it's corrugated cardboard, all the little spaces in between each piece of bedding ends up uh, not having air in it anymore because they're digesting it and the vo whole volume goes down. And then I end up being in a mad rush to put more bedding in. So that's why you see me constantly putting bedding in even though this is mostly bedding. So I think we've got most of these paper towel rolls down here for the bottom layer. And then I'm gonna put some fresh bedding right down in there. And then we'll start with that, that apple seed, or apple seed, <laughs> apple core. And then we'll go right into our food and I've got some good stuff for them. Lots of the stuff they like, strawberries. Of course, they don't tell me they like it. They just go through it quickly. This this right here, we're going to have a mini experiment here. This is a, a head of a lettuce and that is going to go right here. And I want to see how fast that can go. So we'll, we'll kind of track that. We've got some more apples. We've got a pepper, some different various carrots that we just left too long and they got all slimy and nasty. So perfect for worms. And then potato peels. I was surprised. I had some um, potato peels, sweet potato peels that I put in and they went pretty fast. So we'll see if these regular potato peels go fast too. But we're going to give them kind of a sizable feeding. They seem to be going through stuff. It's been seven days since their last feeding and we just saw, I think that one apple core was really the only food that was kind of distinguishable. Um, and that apple core, of course, that's down there, but there's a banana. So they only have two bins instead of three bins to go in and out of. So maybe more will attack the food and less will be down in the, the bottom. But uh, there we go, we got a little, I think that's celery. So that should do it, we'll put some as far as the food goes, now we'll put some, a little bit of coffee down. And I will check this in a couple days, see how the temperature is doing. And they certainly have a pretty good gradient right here. This is grit for them. They've got a pretty good gradient to get away from any heat if that uh, happens. So we're gonna cover this up. And again, I'm about to unleash, I don't know, maybe three to 400 worms on this bin from the lowest tray that was in here. 
what I did was I took, we just went through, my wife and I went through and pulled out as many worms as we could find just to kind of help it along. And we will bait out the rest of the worms. So, all right, there we go. Here is the area that we uh, fed in. In fact, I'm going to put these thin ones here so we remember which side we did it. That'll be our feeding zone indicator. And now we are ready for the finale. Here comes the worm time lapse. All right, I think we got most of them down there. Um, just in case you were wondering and you saw a couple that didn't, you know, get in there from when I dumped them out, I scooped them out and put them in the bin. So I hope everybody is doing well with their worm bins and having a great day. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.